Hey, if you're looking to upgrade your vibrating jig game, then today's show is just for you. I've got five tips that are going to help you become a better fisherman and increase the number of bites you get with a vibrating jig. Now, these tips are simple, but they'll make a huge difference in the effectiveness of your bait. Now, I'm going to share with you some incredible tips that will help you start catching bass on the vibrating jig. By applying these techniques, you'll become confident in fishing with this lure. And the more comfortable you are with this lure, the more bass that you're going to catch. It's important that you watch this video all the way through because if you skip any part or you don't apply all of these tips, it's going to be the difference between your vibrating jig fishing being successful or failing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about the basics of bass fishing. And let's get started right now by improving your vibrating jig skills. Now let's get into these vibrating jig tips. We all know how deadly a vibrating jig can be, especially when it comes to tempting those big trophy size fish. But if you're new to this bait, you can't just cast it out and reel it back and expect it to be effective and catch a pile of fish. It takes a bit more effort and technique to really make a vibrating jig sing. Tip number one, you got to choose the right trailer. The trailer you choose can make a huge difference in the action of your bait. You want a trailer that maximizes the erratic action of that vibrating jig, which means it shouldn't create any drag on the bait. In my opinion, a straight trailer like a fluke, just like a straight tail fluke, is the way to go. When you snap that rod tip and you speed up the retrieve, that bait will dart and shimmy, sending out a flurry of vibrations that drive the fish wild. Now, on the other hand, if you use a trailer like this Berkeley Chigger Crawl with these big old flap and crawl appendages on it, that's really going to create a lot of disturbance in the water. And it's going to create a lot of drag on your vibrating jig. And it will slow it down and cause that vibrating jig to raise up in the water column. So in my opinion, you really want to stick with a straight-tailed worm or a straight-tailed fluke bait to really maximize the erratic action of that vibrating jig. Tip number two, trim up your vibrating jig skirt. Most people don't think to trim up the skirt on their vibrating jig, but if you have two sides to the skirt on your vibrating jig. You have a top side of the skirt and you have a bottom side of the skirt. If you just trim up the bottom side of that skirt a little bit, it will cause that skirt to flare out. It will reduce the drag on it, and it gives that skirt more room to breathe, so it gives it a more lifelike action. So if you just take a couple of snips on your skirt underneath, trim up the skirt, give it that room to expand and breathe, it's going to have a more realistic presentation to the fish, and that's probably going to get you a couple of extra strikes. Tip number three. Tip number three is to match the type of blade with the type of cover that you're fishing. For example, this is a Booyah Melee, and it has a straight bar connecting the blade to the bait. And that straight bar allows that bait to be fished over cover, and it will actually slide up over uh, logs and limbs over that cover, and it does not get hung up as much as, say, like a jackhammer or a, um, just a standard chatterbait. These baits are connected by a wire onto a loop onto the head of the bait. So when you're bringing those across the cover, they have a tendency to rotate. See how that bait, it wants to rotate and it'll sink that hook into the cover and you'll get snagged up. These baits are much better for snapping them up out of that grass line. Now let's talk painted blades versus silver blades. Now in general, a painted blade will produce more strikes because it dulls the flash of that blade with the exception of if you're fishing in a shad spawn, that silver blade can be much more attractive as it produces that flash when you're fishing in that shad spawn, and that flash can be much more attractive. So in general, I would fish with a painted blade over a silver blade unless you're fishing during that shad spawn. Now the final tip is to create more action in your retrieve so that you can generate more reaction strikes. A vibrating jig is great when you just cast it out and retrieve it straight back, but you need to have some irregularity to the retrieve. And you can do this by changing the speeds of your retrieve. You can use some small, small snaps of the rod, but the more you can get the bait to dart and dive, the, the more strikes that you're going to generate. So impart some action into your retrieve to produce more reaction strikes. So those are some beginner basic vibrating jig tips that will help improve your vibrating jig fishing. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you go down and subscribe to the channel so that you uh, find out when we release new content. We do that every week. And you know how we do it here on RC Bass. And happy fishing. Stay safe out on the water. Tight lines. And hook them up.